okay, um, things that are reinforced are going to have, are going to stay longer, right? So if I have some uh, interaction um, with you today, and I, I may remember it well as long as I have good memory, but um, let's say if I have interaction with you continuously over time, I, then it reinforces my memory of you and probably, um, it's like when, when you're a little, you notice how like a, a month it seems like a year, you know, and a year seems like two years. I, mean, I remember summer vacation felt like a year for me, you know, it felt like a whole other year um, because I'm taking in so much and I think that's part of um, why the regression happens like that. As you're, as you're, or you're taking so much data at the same time, your ability to recall all the data that's happening is, or to retain it, is a, is, is a little bit more challenged. So those memories from longer ago, you're, you, you have less <laughs> coupled, yes, less coupled with it. Um, but even still, I think the emotional part, things that are emotionally laden, um, also have stronger memories. Because my mother thought that she was back yeah. in high school. Yeah, and that is and natural. She, she kept saying that her boyfriend was coming that day to see her. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's how she was. She yeah. Was. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it just as um, as your brain develops, you you reverse the other way. So mm -hmm. Um, like she said, the limbic system remains intact, uh, but this part you lose the mm -hmm. frontal part of your brain, the frontal part of your brain, which is like the having an idea and the sequencing it and completing it, um, and the empathy and the um, safety awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are the last things to develop, and those are the first things uh, mm -hmm. that leave us. Mm -hmm. But the first, but um, the first thing to develop. That autonomic system, that limbic system, fight, flight, or fright, mm -hmm. that is the first thing to go, but that's the last thing that we lose. Oh. And, and so, and our progression, um, even with our memories, can sort of be that way too. Uh, all right. Is there a hereditary genetic predisposition to dementia and Alzheimer's? To dementia? Um, actually, it's very rare for it to be genetic. Um, which is a whole other thing. So, but yes, it's very rare that it's genetic. Um, I think it's something like 0.5%. It's very low. It's on a gene. But there are lots, of, but the reason why I think once upon a time, there was a lot of speculation on the genetic link. It's because um, they have found that it's kind of multi-faceted, what could make you more likely predisposed to having some type of dementia, because there's lots of types, right? So um, uh, certainly, like, our, our physical health, cardiovascular health can have an effect, mm -hmm. um, diet can have an effect, um, our uh, education level can have an effect. Um, so, you know, our environment can have an effect. And you'll find that people who are of the same family tree have a lot of those things in common. So, what was really more of a correlation was being skewed as a cause and effect. Yeah. So, and I think in the education part is more like it does help to exercise your brain. So mm -hmm. if you are um, staying uh, cognitively active, and that doesn't mean like I know people say I do a crossword puzzle. Well, if you are a person who does crossword puzzles every day and you've always done them, that's good. You don't stop doing them. But the point is that you're challenging your brain and learning new things. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, individuals that are doing, I mean, doing continued education, continue to uh, think and learn and try to process, um, have um, better outcomes that way. If you think of your brain like a, like a muscle, you know, you're exercising it, makes it stronger, you know, so, um, yeah.
Look at this. We need to do a quick review because we've changed places. And one of the things we know about brains is where you learn and hear something matters. And one of the things as we get older, it matters more than you think. When you change rooms, your brain resets the screen. And that is one of the reasons, even if there wasn't a phone call, you might walk from one room to the other and then, what was it I came in here for? Mm -hmm. Because when you're in a whole new setting, look at all the new data that's coming in and it's bombarding your senses. And if you didn't strongly hook the thing you wanted to go do into that, what's called working memory, by the time you get to the new place, there's nothing to find. Unless you go back to where you had the thought before and then you can find it. Now, I just said a word that's really important, working memory. We now know there's a whole variety of different kinds of memory storage in the human brain. We used to just think it was either long-term and short-term. That's not true. Working memory is probably one of the most <coughs> vital kinds of memories, and it involves a complex process. Do this. Working memory means that you have to wire together all parts of your brain to get it to work. Because it's complex, human beings can hold the following number of things in working memory. Working memory means I'm able to manipulate and work with them all at the same time. Five, put your hand up. Five, wonderful, five to eight. That's the most a human being can hold on to, and this is the least that a normal functioning human being able, should be able to hold on to at a time. Five to eight. So I can, should be able to hold on to at least five pieces of information in my working memory. It's actually pretty complicated. I've got to do a variety of things to do it, but I can't. So what I did when I wanted to make coffee, when I was sitting there and finished the TV program, I put make coffee in working memory. And then I went to a new place, and before I could get settled in the new place, the kitchen, which is where I would make the coffee, the telephone rings. So I didn't quite make it to the kitchen to establish the relationship, which would have allowed me to go ahead and do what? Maybe they caught me, I could have finished it off. But instead, what happened is the telephone rang. Attention, attention, new data, incoming. So what I did is I went nice to the telephone, and the first thing, it was my friend. Now I got diverted a little bit because what did I have to find? Because the way she did it. Her name, and so that took a little energy, so it's my friend Betty. And then she asked me a question. Do you want to meet? She gave me data at 2 o'clock, at the mall, at Macy's. She told me there was a new chocolate store that opened. And then I had to hold on to the information about that. And then I had to go find the thing that I know she likes. So I had to go do that. And it was the, 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 the white, shut up. <laughs> now that reaction was you trying to give me more data when I was already trying to work with data. And so what did you notice my little Olympic did? There you go. <laughs> Shut, up. Shut, up. Shut up is a way to say you're trying to do too much and I didn't like that. And it's a fight system. It was an autonomic automatic. So people say, Shut up, I'm trying to would you leave me alone? That distress sign is just you're trying to put data in and I'm already processing. Do you mind? Mm -hmm. And what you want to say is I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, I was just trying to help you. It's like, what part of I was trying to process data and you're interrupting, did you not get? <laughs> and what's our natural reaction when somebody says, shut up? What's your problem? No, I was gonna tell you why you I was interrupting. Huh? That's what you're gonna do, do this. Go ahead, do it. Y'all love diarrhea of the mouth. You get diarrhea of the mouth. You try to tell them, even when they said, don't tell me. You ignore their message back to you because you have important you wanted to understand why you interrupted them. I don't give a shit why you interrupted me. I was trying to tell you, quit interrupting me so I could finish what I was doing. Now some of us are always that way, but guess what happens when you get dementia? Even if you weren't, you become more that way. Guess what happens when you're stressed? Same thing. So professionals, when you're trying to talk to families about, this is what I want you to, well, shut, wait, shut up, I can't take it. And family members, you're trying to talk to another family member. I can't hear this right now, would you? Particularly, you're trying to talk to the one who's the primary, because you're observing that their behavior is not helping. Mm -hmm. And they're going, ah! Mm -hmm. And you're going, wait, wait, I just want to tell you. <coughs> what did they just tell you? I'm full, leave it alone. Uh, we have a hard time hearing that message, don't we? Because of what needs, it means we need to do what? Take a time out, just shut up. 
And then when they pause, that's when you say, I'm sorry, I interrupted what you were doing. Because we want to work with them, not fight with them. And if you keep pushing your agenda, do this, take your, take your finger and poke. Poke, poke at somebody with it. Go, poke. How many of you like that poke? Would, that, would you just be quiet? So what I'm going to tell you, this is a critical message that for you to get into your brain and appreciate. When I give you negative feedback, it's not because I'm trying to be ugly. It's I'm trying to get you to listen to me. Because you're generally trying to talk to me. So I put coffee in there, but all this other stuff. I filled up all the space. Not only the five. You're gonna, I'm going to have caramels, but you're going to have coconut. And we're, we need to meet at the men's rear entrance. So what will I not have with me when I get there? The vacation pictures and who will I not have called? Margaret. Where's coffee? Well, I lost that a long time ago. That's not even on the table anymore. I mean, it's long gone. I don't even really get to it anymore right now. <coughs> Except if you're a young person, you're young, and your wiring is really good and quick.